We're Kathy in. Machina, number 10. I can't believe we've gotten to 10 episodes. I know. It's a, it's a monumental day. Today we have Bucky Lassick, 10-time X Games gold medalist. Do you guys do building. that on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Hyped it up. Yeah. So uh, the hype is real, finally. We've been saying we were going to have someone of some importance. <laughs> What do you guys and have? We've like met the, that. the janitors and stuff, or, yeah. <laughs> or random friends, <laughs> random friends, random friends. We've had uh, our friend Eric Valdez on Gustavo Menezes, who's won Lama. He's a Venice local. Well, we're at the Porsche Center, so I'm sure the janitor is probably fast too. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably true. It's, it's probably, probably true. true. So, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We've Thanks been trying to me. get this going for for almost a month now. We finally got all the schedules to align and got a good facility to use so check my instagram dms yeah <laughs> that's how i did TJ, it tj <laughs> slipping in the dms instagram dms it's the move it, it is a move it really is i've actually for for minus have gotten a couple athletes that way really actually, uh barrichello his sons i think are going to be athletes now Uh-oh. and it's all through dm really yeah that's <laughs> that awesome. was too <laughs> that's uh, like the last few days like all through dms no way yeah okay well so that's so pretty cool. That, that's how you forget LinkedIn. We got Montoya now and both Barrichello's. Yeah. It's not Instagram, too bad. Instagram DM. So let's just jump straight into it. For the few people that don't know who you are, yeah. who are you? Uh, I'm a professional skateboarder and I am a car enthusiast who just so happens to be able to race cars. That's a great way to put it. That's yeah. a great way. I like that. Yeah. Perfect. So... Before we st- pushed play, we started to talk a little bit about how you, when you got into skateboarding, mm-hmm. but mainly the era that you got started in skateboarding yeah. and that the transition from when vert or, or bowl skating was the shit yeah, to I, s- street skating becoming it. And you're a vert skater. Well, vert, yeah, when I first got in, I was competing against like Christian Asoy and Caballero Lance and Tony, all those guys. And then, uh, yeah, it kind of took a little dump, and I found myself kind of, you know, I was a street, I was young, so I street skated too, Yeah, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it got tough for a while, and I, I actually started working at a body shop, a friend's body shop in, in Baltimore. That's and crazy. That's, that's how I kind of learned how to paint cars and do body work and got into the car side of things a little bit more other than like the stereo, you know? <laughs> right? I had a couple of Honda Civics that were bumping, and then uh, yeah, I wrapped one around a tree, trying to go fast uh, with bald tires when it when it just started raining. That and never works. Wrapped it around a tree. It doesn't. That's a tough deal. So yeah, after that, I got a um, a Volkswagen Corrado, and I was like, the only thing I'm gonna do besides put always run good tires is gonna I'm gonna do suspension. So I ended up doing suspension, some conies, and then uh, later on I ended up doing, I, I swapped it from a G60 to a VR6, and then it was just on from there. It was, I did everything. Yeah, you're, you're like, well, can I ever stop? Like, yeah. can I just keep adding more <laughs> on to Is this like a video game where I can just keep modding it, <laughs> like it's on PlayStation? <laughs> I was like the weekend warrior, so I, I, I would wrench on my car, and then I would also do track days at Summit. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Where's some of that? Is that West like Virginia. West Virginia? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. A little bit of a trek, right? Yeah. How far they is actually... that? For an hour and a half. We would we would have a couple of buddies that were in the cars and we'd meet people out there and we would basically drive out in the morning, like hustle out there <laughs> early in the morning, sit in the classroom. This is when you had to sit in the classroom every weekend. So right. I was like, all right, I know about weight transfer. <laughs> <laughs> I know about the flags. I know about this. Let's go. Dang, yeah. So yeah, did that. Pretty much a couple times a month at least. Would and you say that's early 90s? Yeah. Early yeah. 90s. So you, so you, sorry, you went into, so you were up on the up and up with skating and then the vert kind of took a dip. D- is that when you got into the bodywork stuff? And yeah, then, that's when I found more time to actually drive and did more of like the hobbyist, you know, side of car stuff. And were you still pursuing the, the skating, skating thing? Yeah, right? I was still skating. We were going, we were driving you know the few few uh heavy skaters that were still into it even though we weren't really getting paid to do it we still kind of drove to like pennsylvania and all these virginia to skate these vert ramps and, right and kind of still get our little 
sessions on. Yeah. What kept you, what was the interest maybe in vert skating? And instead of, I know you still street skate, but what was kind of like, no, the vert's where I want to be a professional. Or was it, I just want to be a professional and it happened to be vert is when you really got noticed. Yeah, vert was kind of just what I took off on. Uh, I skated everything. The only thing that slowed me down was when I blew my ACL. Hmm. And that was right when vert was coming back in, like X Games and stuff. So I missed the first X Games because of my ACL. And then the second X Games, I had sponsorship issues. And then the third one, I finally made it to. There you go. And where where do you remember where you finished in the in your first X Games? It was like fifth or something. It's not bad. What year was it that Tony did the nine hundred? That was the year I won. First year I won ninety nine. That's what I thought. I thought it was ninety nine, and that's yeah. kind of when everything started to blow back up. Yeah, right? that's when the video game happened, and yeah, I was gonna say I like yeah. I knew like when so how I met Bucky was. The he showed up. I was racing Formula Car Challenge, and it was like, oh, by the way, Bucky Lassick's racing like in a Formula Speed 2.0. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Like Bucky, like the guy, like I played, I played his character on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater <laughs> right. Eight yeah. and Underground Two. Yeah, <laughs> like he was the move. <laughs> Dark <our> age. <laughs> especially so, yours. Yeah, it was like that was so cool. So we met, and that's uh, that's where it took off. But yeah. was that at that point when you had? You did like the FS 2.0. Was that later on in your, I guess, car career? That was once skateboarding kind of picked back up. And then I got into, once I moved to California, once skateboarding picked back up, I got into go-karting. So I have, I still have my same shifter cart now. It's like 14 or 15 years old. That's sweet. Actually, it's like 18 years old now. Um, I started karting with uh, Rocky Moran and all the fast guys. Yeah. Rocky. And... Then I got invited to the Toyota Celebrity Race, yep. and I whooped ass. In <laughs> and then all the instructors, like Joe and Tart- Tartak, is that how you say his last name? And Danny McKeever. Joking, yeah. yep. They were all like, dude, you got to take this more serious. I'm like, well, I kind of got this skateboarding thing kind of going on, you know? Like, <laughs> it's kind of my career. <laughs> but I did take the time out. I went to Skip Barber. I did all the schools. Um, and then uh, after that, I started going to Utah, Miller Motorsports. And I started racing the Mustang Challenge. Yep. Then after that, I met my buddy Jim Johnson, who was into racing. And I started racing Porsches with him at Sebring, uh, Homestead, and there's another track we went to, Road Atlanta, racing his cup car and stuff like that. So I got really acclimated to all these different kind of cars. And then I got invited by what, Tito? Tilo. Tilo, yeah, yeah Tilo, Tilo Stewart, from, yeah. from from World Speed. World Speed, yeah. And to come out to Sonoma and jump in uh, FS2. Yeah. You know, yeah, and do the open wheel challenge with those guys. And that was, I guess you were like, okay, so you had done Skip Barber, but that was like yeah, your first proper. Barber. That was my wheel. first real, like, aerodynamic, <laughs> put all your weight in the braking zone. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Non boosted brakes, Just like, stomp yeah. on. Oh. Like, put. All my weight, like late. So that was a big learning curve. And then also being at Sonoma, which was pretty gnarly. I was going to say, that's a tough track. Yeah. yeah. In a formula car? Yeah. yeah. That's one of the, I mean, a lot of engineers will say, like, this is the hardest track in the United States for yeah. a formula car. So I had some good you know, engineers. That. They, you know, we went over uh, data and stuff and I got up to speed and I was running top three. I ended up winning the, the, uh, the championship that year. Oh, you did the whole thing. I don't must know. I only, so two, I only did two weekends. That must have been so demoralizing for the people that are actually like, not that you weren't taking it serious, but are like hopes that this is going to be their dream career. Yeah. And it comes a skateboarder, like, usually, let me try, usually, it. Usually try it out. Yeah, <laughs> usually you got to do like, you know, the, a few series. You have to do the series, right? Yeah. But that year they ended up doing the championship over the weekend in two oh. races. Remember that? Yeah, totally. The, so the IndyCar weekend or something. The first race, I finished second. And then the second race, I was running second, and the guy went off that was running first. So I ended yeah. up, and, and he ended up, you know, probably like fourth or fifth. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up winning the championship. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Wait, it, it was, I think it was IndyCar weekend, right? Yeah. It would have been, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool that they did that. They raced Formula Car Challenge with IndyCar Weekend. That was That's cool. so funny. <laughs> I've always wanted to jump in the uh, the lights. 
Yeah. Yeah, I never got an opportunity to jump in those. The indie lights, you're yeah. saying? Yeah. It's yeah. Ne- with, it's never too late. It's never too late. We could probably They're arrange something. now. I mean, Why don't you guys arrange splitting the season? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> indie lights is... <laughs> that's you. That's oh, you're talking about Insta lights, maybe? They call it something different now, right? Um, you're maybe talking about Insta lights. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It, what did Frankie Muniz do? No, oh. indie lights. They were indie lights? Atlantic. Atlantic. Indie lights. Yeah, oh. Atlantic. Same, same you could, ish, do, you could do same. Atlantics, too, though. They still have Atlantic cars running yeah. around. It's that's not CCA. the pro, but it's still... That's still a pretty cool car. Yeah. Those things are quick. Frankie Frankie Muniz, right? He yeah. did. He you were telling yeah, Formula he did, BMW he raced for a little while. Yeah, did, moved his way up, and then well, <laughs> never really moved his way up. Uh, well, wow. <laughs> how do we <laughs> <laughs> wrote a bigger check? Yes. Yeah. How like, about that? Now we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Shelby Blackstock. Well, that's kind of what you got to do when you're a child actor. You kind of got to go MIA for a little bit, and yeah. then you come back and get this gnarly role all tatted up and stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> totally different guy now yeah that's crazy i didn't realize he did all the stuff so yeah maybe i mean indy lights is still is it alive and well they have a new car mm-hmm. so it's it's uh i mean you would love it the car is everything you want it to be really <laughs> yeah i, I nice. drove it at indy like the the road course last year and it's like it's a you know turbocharged engine and just so much tire i think i would be more of a rain guy now <laughs> your rain guy yeah because of like all the dirt me, experience yeah. send me in when it rains <laughs> it, the it, ace the rain ace yeah the rain ace tag me in <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see that yeah no it's those cars are i mean proper like it probably would help because they do like on cold tires they're yeah. terrible yeah. they're so you can't even it's like just sliding when you press the throttle right. so like you probably begin on cold tires just own on everyone own everyone yeah. Maybe that's the move. You need to start doing dirt fish school. For yeah. cold tires. For cold yeah. tires. That would be good. Ooh, you think? See? I, I want to try and do like dirt fish or something. You should. How did it? It teaches you a lot of left foot. A lot of left foot braking. Okay. Stuff, so. Really? So yeah. are you left foot braking? Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. Oh. That's all sequential, right? Yeah. That makes the sense. Only, the only time I go back to basically, you know, heel towing is when I'm driving a six-speed mm. gotcha. otherwise it's all left foot yeah right sharing the brake kind of helps under brake you know sharing left foot and gas at the same time it kind of helps i don't know like uh settle the car more yeah when it when it starts to get loose yeah definitely yeah no and it, i mean that's that probably helped when you went in the form the fs 2.0 because it was Left foot braking, right? Or did you try and do? No, I've always with karting. I've always left you foot did. Braking. Okay, it was more of the the arrow. The yeah. arrow was the big learning curve for me there. Right, right. Go faster, more grip. Yeah, it's a fun one. Yeah, I I went off a couple times. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> I don't even remember it. I went off in turn top of the hill. Yep. Is that four? Yeah. It goes right, and then it goes down. Yeah. As you work your way back down I to the carousel. F- yeah, I went off in. F- Four, and then the right before you go next to, I don't know what the turn was. I went off big there. <laughs> I went off. During a race, I went, uh, I think I, I think I just, I went outside. Or I went in, I went inside where everyone was like, you know, everyone kind of break checks on the first level. Yeah, yeah. And I went for the big move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, was this the? Send it. I took out Mike. Mike Anderson. Yeah, I took out Mike Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that move. Yeah, yeah, we were because we had me and Mike had like Mike's really good. Yeah, yeah have you have you heard of Mike in, in Standard I Car? I don't think so. Yeah, he's he's I mean he's good good driver. I'm still friends with him. Really? To this day, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is From that when that you guys met? When you yeah, were like, <laughs> yeah, I felt so bad. I took him out. I went right into the back of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, he's he wheels those cars too, but. He's like the bright orange FM. You've probably seen the car. Probably. It's iconic. So it's iconic. It's iconic. It is. He's been around. He's been doing it. But So at this point, you do the dirt fish school, and you're like, opportunity comes along for well, you to start. Well, here's what happened. I, did, I was about to go race Grand Am with Jim Johnson, okay. Rebel Rock Racing. And my agent's the same agent as Ken Blocks, Dave Miras, rest in peace, Travis Pastrana. Um so here I'm getting ready to go do this road racing, uh, tarmac and stuff. Like, I'm all about grip. 
I'm ready to make, you know, I'm, I'm all practiced up. I'm right. ready to be You're fast, ready. Run, run with the fast guys. And then my agent's like, do you want to go test for Subaru for a rally? I'm like, this is exactly, like, a great opportunity, but this is exactly what I didn't want to do, like, come in unprepared. Right. So then I rushed out to Dirtfish and mm. did, did a few days of school there and basically got a seat got a seat with Factory Subaru. That's and, sweet. Yeah, in GRC. Yeah. That really not, is. Not bad. No. <laughs> not bad. The car was struggling at first. Um, we had one or two good years, um, but... It was definitely an awesome experience. What do you what do you think of like GRC, the cars driving them, the the format? Because I've always like I think it's really cool. It's a it's like Supercross really caught on with people, it, you know, yeah. the stadium type of feel. But like, it's tough for how short the races are. I know that the cars really can't. It's know. perfect. the The length of the race is perfect. I think the format needs to change a little bit and kind of it kind of needs to. Um, Kind of what WRRX World Rallycross does. Yeah, I think they need to kind of take in consideration their format so that you don't have so many heat races yeah. that are yeah. that are basically irrelevant. Right, you're racing for a spot that you already qualified. Just for. crash damage. Yeah. just more crash damage. Yeah, mm. and it's expensive. Yeah, you know. Um, so I think once I think that needs to change. Other than that, the cars, the series is awesome. I, I think it could be ran a little better. They're incredibly fast. Have you seen yeah. one, of the, one of them go up against a Formula One car? Like zero to 60? Yeah. It's, incre- it's insane, right? It's insane. I mean, all those are drive. skinny tires. Yeah. Those are, they're not that. They're not that big. They're not that big at all. Really? Yeah, a few more Under two of, seconds. Yeah. That's, it's crazy. There's a video online. Under what? Under two seconds. Ooh. It's like a Mercedes Ooh. F1 car going against one of the, I think it was like a Monster Energy event, maybe. Yeah. And they did two cars. Back that was GRC. It was, it was at GRC. It was race. in uh, Barbados. You're right. Oh, it was. Yeah. Yep. It was Ken against Hamilton. Yeah. Okay. okay. Smoked them off the line. Ken. Ken. <laughs> Dude, not even close. Not even close. But wow. Then, you know, on the straightaways, it was. Yeah, they, story, it picks but. up, but the acceleration is in- incredible. Yeah. So this is actually something we've talked about maybe a little bit in the past. Is GRC? I think is really cool. There's yeah. professionals in it, right? Yep. But it's still early. They have the GRC lights. It's still early, and it doesn't seem like there's a real path to move up and make a career. It's in expensive, expensive, expensive. <clears throat> and I think the format needs to get better. But they are racing, I believe, um, Razors next year. So that is a cheaper form of racing mm. that you'll be able to jump into and kind of jump up. But to go from, like, a Razor to, like, a lights car, a lights car to run a light to run a lights car is almost as expensive as a supercar. Oh, I couldn't imagine how. What I was told how expensive it was per race. I was blown away. I mean, it's like Shook. thirty grand a race. Easy, easy without crash damage in lights. Yeah, without crash damage. Yeah. One of my good friends, Christian Brooks, races. He's yep. yeah, he's uh, one of the top guys. Him and Alex Keys. I'm good friends with Alex too. Me as well. And we'll it's just on. like. Dude, the crash damage bills that they that they have at the end of some of these and weekends are... they don't are... regulate enough to stop it. No. You know, oh, they don't? No, no, you can just it's cash into people, right? Yep. Oof. Yep. How much of your budget is crash damage? You got to build into it. A lot. Because normally really? in sports car and formal car racing, you budget riding off a car. Like if you're you're doing <laughs> it right, you budget just to be safe, right? right you yeah. budget riding off a car, whatever that is, 100 grand, 60 grand, whatever you're in. I have to imagine it's more than that because and I know you're, Christian. You're not even going to be competitive unless you're rebuilding the car too. After oh really? Race. Yeah, you have to take care of those cars. Yeah, I mean, they, stuff breaks a lot. What so the th- upkeep and everything. Yeah. What do you think Andretti and Volkswagen are spending? They're probably spending less than Subaru. Just because Subaru is trying to catch up. They already had everything. They the motors are developed. Right. Everything's there. They're just putting a different body on it. Wow. But they, they are spending a lot. <clears throat> yeah. We're talking t- over $10 million? Um, I'm, I'm not a numbers guy, but <laughs> I definitely think it's up there. It's up there. Yeah. And that's so expensive. I wonder just what... I don't a, think the Volkswagen... I don't think it's selling any cars either. 
Who's buying no, Volkswagen come on. Bugs? For because, that reason, because, either. Why don't they put it on a polo or something? Right. Or, that or, makes, or well, yeah. that's what they do. Rally golf. Why don't that's they what they do yeah. in, in the WRX GTI, series. GTI. Deal. In Europe, they don't run the the Beetle. They run the, yeah, the Golf or whatever. I just think it's so ridiculous. They run a freaking bug. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for what, I mean, because people that are interested in racing usually I mean, I aren't going to buy a bug. I Scott Speed racing a bug or driving a bug. If it looks like his supercar. <laughs> the flower. Oh, man. That's... Tanner's a Porsche guy. Tanner is a Porsche guy. Yeah. Yeah. See? We'll have to somehow get Tanner out here. Yeah, get Tanner out. Tanner lives right down the street, not far. Really? No, I know we're planning to get Duna or something. Pat yeah. Long on here. Yep. We'll get a few guys. We'll get a few guys on. We'll get a few guys. Yeah, Pat's locals. Uh, Jeff Swartz. Yep. He's local. Yeah. All those guys. Pat's here all the time because motorsports here. Did you get to talk to my buddy Joey? Joey Joey Seely. He sets up all. He's a suspension guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, Porsche guy. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That'd be really cool. So, let's dive a little bit deeper. I talked about the fun stuff. <laughs> um, one of the things we we've, we've talked a lot about is overcoming fear whether or not it's fear of success not being successful fear of we talked a lot about both being in bad race car accidents and overcoming yeah. that fear of getting back on track right. i have to imagine that it's pretty similar the f- fear aspect of getting very injured doing a trick on on a vert ramp it's definitely harder skating than it is racing. I have to imagine. Yeah. Um, the only thing you start worrying about racing is is money, cost. Yeah. Like destroying parts, your team, you know, your techs working on your car, hustling before the next heat race or getting getting it ready. You don't want to destroy the car. Um, skating, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's You hear these guys like, these baseball players that like sprain sprain a finger and they're like out. <laughs> it's like no, there's none of that. Right, you're like what? <laughs> it's like no, you're you're taping it to your other fingers that work, you know, and you're still using it. You're still, I don't know, you're still going for it. Racing's kind of the same same thing, you know. You got a damaged car, you got to make it make it work with what you got. What's what's your worst injury? Skateboarding. Uh, I've had so many different ones. I would say my worst one's probably my left ACL because that one that that one kind of took me out of like street skating. So I stopped street skating after that. Uh, Did fractured you? sternum. I, I've taken some big ones. Yeah, I kind of remember. Did you ever have a really bad back injury? No, Danny Way had a neck Danny, injury. Danny, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, okay. So after an injury. Or a really big slam on, on the vert ramp, and you're, you're, I mean, you're shaking up. Who knows if you have a concussion or not? I'm sure. You, you race cars. <laughs> you race cars. That's what it is. I stop Go to cars. And I start stop racing cars. From... <laughs> but, but what's that process in your head? I, I mean, I have to imagine, especially when, when Tony did the 900 and you guys started to go upside down, that it's, learning new tricks and taking those slams, what gets you back up and, and to overcome that and be like, I mean, I, I got to, is it to be able to have that you gotta career? Have drive. You got to have drive. You got to want it. You, you just, you got to really, you got to be hungry. You know, it's the same as anything else. It's, it's when you, when you lose that hunger, you just kind of fall off. Right. Yeah. And And then like mentally, how does that affect you? Like when you, do you just literally have to short term memory type thing? You turn it off. I mean, you just turn it off. Learn from it and turn yeah, it off. You just, yeah, you know, you're like, okay, well, you definitely attack it a little less coming back. Right. You know, you kind of baby step it, and then before you know it, you're just back. And I imagine once you land it, just like in a car, right? You, this corner's flat, and you're not taking it flat, and you take it flat, and after that, you're like, oh, yeah, it's flat. I'm sure it's right. a trick's pretty similar, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's something that you, but when you get taken out, you really, it's like, it's almost like a mechanical fail on a car when something, when you get taken out mechanically and yeah. you have a big off because of that. I'd say that's more of what it's like when you have a fall on a skateboard because it's not always the hardest trick. Right, mm. you know, you just get you get served up, and you're just like, "Whoa, 
how did that happen? Okay, well, that was a fluke, you know, flukes, flukes can happen. Right. Doesn't matter if you're doing yeah, a 360 so or a 900, it's, it's like when, can happen. when a bad tire goes or when something happens <laughs> under braking and you're going 140, which I've had, I've had it at Sebring, I've had a tire go on a rear on a Porsche cup car right as I was about to go on the brakes by the hotel. Yeah. Yeah, I was flying. That's no fun. I had the biggest tank splasher, <laughs> and, I, and I did not. I saved it. I went. I went. I Just saved ca- it. And caught it, it like seventeen times. Oh, I caught it like seriously. <laughs> it's it's, I have a video of it, and uh, destroyed the car. The, the tire destroyed the whole rear quarter. But yeah. I mean, I might as well have stuffed it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a big one. But yeah, that's kind of like what it's. When you take a slam skating, it's just like, damn. All right. You really can't think too much about it. You Fill just, her back up. You just kind of get on it. Did you watch this year's 24-hour of yep. Daytona? Yes. Just, speaking of the, the tire going going away, man, the, the amount of tires that they were having go. Did you yeah. watch? A little bit. Hoberlins. I saw that one. Hoberlins, the Taylors. I mean, not Taylors. Oh, yeah. um, Wayne Taylor Racing. Yep. He's so lucky. Coming off the bank and going to the bus stop. Luckily, is right as the car transitioned to flat, Oof. hand straight, tire let go. What, what, and what I could this? imagine. What? what? What do we got going on? Like, is this a new DPI thing? No, because they, they were running it, right? the same car they last year. It's camber. They don't know what it is because the other car wasn't... Only a couple cars suffered it, right? Yeah. Mainly his. Mainly his. Uh, the Mazdas yep. were, mm. were getting it. Um, but it was that Cadillac. You know, the five car, that one, I don't think had a, maybe had one small, small flat. And I think they said that was uh, running over debris. Yeah. But they legitimately, Wayne Taylor Racing legitimately had a tire blow up. And they, you know, the tire manufacturer gives you parameters. I'm sure they do this yeah, in GRC too. They you're also think you got to take in consideration no yellows, so they weren't changing tires as much. Yeah, so they, they were, were trying probably, to double stint more. Yeah, just extend less time to cool the tires off and kind of. Hmm. Yeah, it could have been in a different temperature window too, compared to last year. Yeah, I don't know. It, but Wayne Taylor said he's like we were inside all the windows, camber everything. Really. And they ended up retiring the car just for safety. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's a big hit. I mean, there's 20 cars in that field. Last year there were 10. You have a DNF, that's a big hit. Yeah, it's a championship. Totally. totally. And the, the construction of the tires is the same too from from last year? That I don't know. I Those mean, tire manufacturers change so much stuff, especially Conti, without telling you. Yeah. Right? Interesting. Who knows? That's a cool event. And that's you, hard. If you're having that like deal happen at the 24 hours of Daytona, what I mean, imagine leading. And you're like on hour 12 and you see like car after car have these. Jeez. Oh, you're thinking so about it. Oh, that, you're thinking about it. Oh, for sure. For sure. You feel any vibration. Start you're opening just your like, hands whoa, up. Whoa, 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 <laughs> yep. Open up. Open up. Okay. Well, uh, do you have any aspirations to do that race? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Think you will? Um, I don't know. It's, it just seems like everyone kind of has their, their people kind of set. Yeah. You know? Come on, man! You could you could be a stellar silver. Yeah, you get can your, get, get in your there. FIA silver license. Yeah, they'll use you just for the rain. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Night night at the when when rain. It's dark and raining. Like <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> have you have you done any of the endurance racing? Any uh, of it? Never, never, <clears throat> no, never. It, I've raced Daytona, but just in Continental. Just in yeah, yeah three hour races. Actually, don't. just PCA. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, just just uh, kind of. Not even like a, uh, yeah, just a small. It's a way different mindset. It is is not as much today because everyone is, it's essentially a sprint race, but it kind is of. a way different mindset. I feel like for prototype, it's a sprint race, but like if you're in a GT car, you're, you're saving tires. You have, I, I mean, so I did the 25 hours of Thunder Hill mm-hmm. this past year. That was my first proper like endurance race. And my God, <laughs> when, you, when you get like at night and there's like, we were in a Mazda 3. So there was, there was a LMP2 car there that was like, you know, the lead car. And there's other prototype stuff and you got radicals. I mean, the 25 hours of Thunder Hill, if you're thinking about doing endurance racing, do that mm-hmm. to start. Because it is so ragged and just raw and like 
you get you learn the fundamentals of it, but it's just it there's a point of it that's just ridiculous. Like we were in the Mazda three, and these the closing rate that we have from these cars is insane. Mm. You 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 just literally like when you go down the straightaway, you just have to hold your line and like let two cars go, two or three cars go. Just keep your I mean you're racing in your mirrors. Totally. In- the whole race. And then oh whoa, I have to pass somebody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, there's like the Miatas that we're passing. And the whole race we spent like just dealing with Pace tire. Car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My God. It was it was nuts. It, it's crazy. And then at night too, it's like your vision is different too. You know, it's like you can only see the edge of the road. Plus you have cars that are like blinding you with mm-hmm. the mirror. And you're you're just like, God, this you don't have the little, mirror, the little TV screen with the, with the backup. <laughs> no. I know. The, the that's triangles. And they have those three. in, in uh, GTLM now. No. That's insane. They have the, no. the video camera rear view mirrors in GTLM. Right. We didn't have that feature. No. <laughs> we did not. need to update. Yeah, yeah. Tell Joey to get on it for next year. Yeah, man. Derek Ambrose with Corksport. Just have him upgrade <laughs> first that's, thing. That's Safety cool. first, man. Yeah. You think that would add weight? No. Okay, because we were way not, overweight. Not enough, not enough. Okay. So you said you have to skateboard tonight. That's mm. why you're not partaking in our... Uh, little drink fest. Our drink fest. <laughs> it's, ca- it's Cafe Machina. We're, we always, whether it's coffee, I'm gluten beer... I'm too. I don't know if they have gluten-free beer here. I don't, I don't think... <laughs> they have ciders? They might. They probably they, have a cider. They or might. Something. So are... Tito's. There's always Tito's. I don't are know. you... Maybe, uh, maybe, are maybe you doing... I won't skate. <laughs> Maybe I'll stay after for a drink. <laughs> so are you participating in the X Games this year? I should be. Yeah, I won the qualifier last year, and then I got like fifth or something. I couldn't make my run. Uh, so, yeah, I should be in it this year. I, ha- I have a contest coming up next week, next weekend in Bondi, Australia. Oh, sweet. So that's why I'm going to skate. Um, Vans has a concrete pool at the block. Yep. Not too far away, so I gotta go skate that tonight and kind of get my concrete legs, <laughs> get the groove back, get it going. I've been skating there a lot, actually. That's cool. What's the biggest difference from late '90s, early 2000s to vert skating now? I honestly, I used to watch it all the time, watch X Games religiously, and I can't remember the last time I've watched, other than going to the Venice skate park, seeing anyone in a pole or vert. Um. Kids are getting good. Kids are technical. They're they're spinning a lot more. They have a lot of power. Uh, the energy level is just it's non it's always progressing. Yeah. You know? It's are they going much higher? Yeah. yeah. Some the thing is it, it hasn't really changed much in, in that sense. Kids are still some kids go high, some kids are more technical. And then you have me. <laughs> <laughs> no kid. No, no kid. No kidding. Are you are you the oldest? I think Vert so. skater of like on the high level, obviously. I mean, still, yeah, I know. I'm old enough to be a master and I'm still competing in the pros. There you go. So That's baller. Is there a master's category? That yeah, there is. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Tony and all those guys skate in masters. Yeah. Wow. I'd feel weird to skate against those guys. <laughs> You're like, I'm not really ready for that yet. We talk. We talk about that in. in I think car- I got to do the Frank, Frankie Muniz thing and kind of peace out for a little. Peace while. out for a little bit and, and come back. I'll still t- skate, but just behind the scenes. Come back and- after a few, you know, pick up some drugs or something. <laughs> get a, you know, oh get a God. habit. Go get through habit. something. Yeah, go through something. <laughs> Create a roadblock. <laughs> so yeah. can- There'll be a VH1. Where are they now? Story. Yeah, <laughs> go be on TMZ for a little. while. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Builds character. Yeah. We talk about, I still race carts for fun when I can. and I just got my daughter a cart. Did you? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. that little little uh, mini yeah. kid cart? How, kid how old's your daughter? She's 10. She's 10? Yeah. No, you didn't get her a kid cart then. You got her like a mini. I got her a, it's, it's What kind a of little, engine? It's a little 80. A little 80? Yeah. Okay. Like a Comer? Oh, like a Comer yeah, Cadet. Yeah, yeah. Comer. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Cadet. Mini. Cadet. Yeah. yeah, that's Cadet. what I was started in. Comer Cadet. But I was joking with my friends, and they're like, "Oh, you're 32 now. You're gonna start racing masters." I'm like, "I don't. I can't get in a cart that much anymore. Maybe, maybe I should." So I told everyone, "Like, I'm gonna race masters. Watch out." And then I, same thing. I'm like, "I can't. 
Yeah. I can't do this. I feel so weird racing against a bunch of 45, 50 year olds being 32. They're like yeah. being lowered into the cart by like an engine. <laughs> like an engine. Right. The cart lift yeah. system. Yeah. I mean, these guys can't, some of these guys can't even last a full feature. They're like falling out of the cart. In Masters? In Masters. For real. I can't do it. You got to race senior forever. You got, well, I want to see you 80 in senior tag ripping through well when i said that i got a text from michael valiente that's like i've lost all respect for you <laughs> i'm like oh yeah never mind <laughs> we're racing senior i think michael he might be 38 now I'm and like, he God. does yeah he, he always senior. does senior. he's a boss andrea castro he still races he? Yeah. phil giebler still every once in a while gets out and races senior where do you go who when you race when you go karting you go depends cal speed? cal speed for lakc or I'll try to pick out one pro kart race. Scusa. Mm. I'm going to do Lancaster this year. But I'm always coaching. And I'd rather keep my clients happy than mm. race. Yeah. But we'll do it. In, I need to get back in a cart too. That's Me the move. I need a new radiator. You need a new cart. I need a new cart. <laughs> do you? My cart in... runs good though. It's still strong. I'm How... right there with like Moosegrave and stuff. Yeah. I, I cart with those guys and he jumped in my cart and he's still fast. So. Yeah. How old still... is it? It's a PTK CRG. Ooh, Paul Tracy cart. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah. It's been, the chrome it's been welded like four times. I drove Wesley Boswell had his 96 maybe? 96, 98 MMI beer, barrel. The barrel, barrel, uh, Honda out at Button Willow last weekend. A bunch of people testing. He let me take it out. <laughs> we were faster than all of the stock Hondas at the track because this was modified back when you could yeah. pull it. Like yours, probably fully modified. Mine just has piston. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's piston stock except for Honda. Yep. I remember when they Kawasaki, Yamaha, TM. Wow. This was back like mid <clears throat> mid early nineties. No mid mid late nineties. That everyone was kind of like playing, and then they're like, "There's no money to be made here. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> we'll stick to Supercross." Yeah, my my car, you have to do a few laps before it starts breaking straight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> get all the get all the rust off the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a one, one side. Brakes. <laughs> brakes need to be rebuilt. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so you so you I've seen you I've seen you once or twice out. I've never introduced myself, but I've seen you out there once or twice at Cal Speed. Uh -huh. Where do you usually go? Uh, I've been to Cal Speed a few times. I used to go a lot, but Moran was my spot. That was the yeah. spot. It was so good. That was the spot. And then uh, I go to Apex. Mm -hmm. I went to Apex for a while, and then I started going to Cal Speed, but I haven't really been too much. Only a handful of times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I haven't really gotten into the Southern California karting scene much. Northern California was like my... My dealio. That's great. K1's opening up uh, yeah. electric. They, yeah, what's going on with that? So here's the story. I know that about this because of CART 360. We broke the news years ago. So originally they, it was supposed to be built already. Mm -hmm. And then the whole going into Mexico thing, building facilities in Mexico came up and they were like, ooh, we're going to spend money on that and make a lot more money than build this go-kart track. Oh. So it's by Lake <laughs> Elsinore. It's going to be a proper... Fully, see, I mean, it's gonna be the best karting facility probably in North America. I mean, they're putting some dough into this place. No way. That and GoPro Motorplex out in Charlotte. Those are probably gonna be the two best karting facilities in America. But what their plan is is to do a, you know, be able to actually have a transition to get people into the sport without kind of sending them down the wrong path. Because if you go to K1 or any other indoor karting facility, there are no real cart shops that have a relationship with those carting facilities to be like hey after indoor carting if you want to get into something bigger faster yeah there's no one that does which i'm amazed at that no cart shop has tried to do this and yeah pick it's totally worth and just be able to pick people yeah so k1's gonna do it they're gonna have their own outdoor carts they're gonna be a little bit different uh and then they're gonna they plan to hold proper races there and you can rent the track they're gonna have garages it's gonna be amazing for california carting yeah. I mean, honestly, because, I mean, you've been to all the tracks. I mean, most mm -hmm. of them, I mean, Apex, Adams, but Button Willow, Willow Springs, they're all run down. No one puts any money back into their facilities. Dude, Cal Speed is the about desert. the only place that does, but they can only do so much because they rent the land, mm -hmm. rent the facility from Auto Club Speedway. Yeah. So they can only do so much. It's still a parking lot. Yeah. And it's still a parking lot. It's not a real proper. Plus, who wants to go to Bakersfield? 
I mean, right. like, and I have to go there tomorrow morning at six a.m. Well, yes, you do, but not many. No, not many. Wait, wait, where'd you say it was? K- the K one. It's gonna spot? be by Lake Elsinore. Lake Elsinore. So it's close to me. Is it, Ooh, Brooks, so. That's that's when you're gonna get your new cart. Get a garage there. I think that's probably oh, where I'm yeah. gonna start working for K one. <laughs> <laughs> be able to race for free. Yeah. <laughs> Hook up Tenzin. See, that's gonna be when you disappear. You're gonna start working at yep. K one, and then I'll come back and be a master in skating. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so can you do normal karting at this K1, or is it just there? No, they're going to plan, yes. They're going to plan to be able to do, hold races there, probably have their own racing series, just like LAKC. I would imagine they would just kind of do what Calspe does instead of renting the local cart. You rent their, basically it's like renting their electric cart. Yeah, 100%. That's good. I would bet LAKC would try to move there. Or some series, or they'll start their own series, and Must. it'll be the biggest for sure. I mean, have you ever been to Fontana, dude? Yeah, in the summer, it's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I live right Terrible by the place. beach. I live in Santa Monica. Yeah, and it'll be a twenty to twenty-five degree difference. Yeah, during the summer from Fontana to the beach, yeah. it's disgusting. No, thank you. Yeah, not a good spot. It's no. brutal. I've done it. No, my car didn't like it either. No, they don't. I have a radiator. It's a experimental fluidine. Yeah. It's probably like half the size of what it should be. <laughs> it works fine in like yeah, normal works, California right, weather. Yeah. Up to 70 Until degrees. you get the 100 degrees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all fat. It's not even, yeah, it's weird. I, I think I know. I've seen some like that, right? They're really deep, yeah. but smaller. Yep. Yeah. So do you run races when you go go karting? No, you just, I just do laps. You just do laps? Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Can't ruin that's the skating cool. career, man. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's not that. It's just like I said, my car, my car's a beater, and I can't justify <laughs> buying a new one when I don't have the time to race it. Right. You know, I can go out and turn a and, few tents off and have fast fun, guys. Yeah. Right. And it's almost cooler. Yeah, that's going that's, fast with that thing because all these up, people. That's when badass. I started showing up again. When I started showing up, I had Moosegrave. Moosegrave. His Musgrave. Name, Musgrave. Yeah. I had Musgrave take my cart and fix it. Like he, but before he took it, I actually ran it. I showed up. In jeans, a long sleeve shirt. Yes, <laughs> love it. And all these guys are in race suits, and I, I even had the old school neck collar. You know, and I, I I'm like, no one's really running a neck collar. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're not so doing I felt that. weird, you know. And then I, I didn't run a neck collar, and then the track came out, and they were like, you got to run this jacket. So they gave me like this beater. Yeah, jacket. yeah, I love it. So I was just so. <laughs> so next time I, I wore a suit and I, I was ready. So, but the first time I went, I felt so weird. <laughs> like, who is this guy? Jeans and the, and I, had the a Go, I had a GoPro on my helmet, and they they uh, they didn't like that either. Yeah, you can't have a GoPro. Oh, is that a thing? Because it they Schumacher? say if you flip, yeah, it's part. A lot of it was because of that. The Schumacher deal. Yeah, because it creates a like a pinpoint for an impact yeah yeah it okay doesn't disperse energy anymore essentially huh the so theory I'm, is. I'm surprised they let apparently let, they haven't used gopros mounts because they break pretty easy they do yeah yeah i bet the, what about the visor cam why is that allowed the little i didn't know any cameras were allowed yeah like yeah. It, there's oh, some indie on, car. The, on the helmet yeah on the helmet oh. no they, they they allow it really on the only like an indie car and stuff, they have that really uh, good visor cam. That like I think they have one pinhole right here. There's a company now making them that kind of come right up top right here. Oh, oh wow! And the cameras are super small, right? So it's not like it's coming into your. Vision. Oh, so that's not like a GoPro you can go and buy. No, 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 no. These are like companies that create their own own okay. product. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Um, yeah, I got to get back in the karting scene, man. I got to get a new radiator and fix my brakes. <laughs> Just oh, going to yeah. stick I'm, it I'm, out on the beat. It's ready, though. I, I, I want to spend time with my daughter, though. That, get her, get that'd be cool to go out with her. Yeah. Do a little lead follow. She doesn't like that. No? No. She doesn't want me to train her in, in what so. Uh, the only thing I can do is stand and point, like, use the, use the whole track. You right. Know, and kind of do that. Because with her, it's like if you tell her too much information, it, she just kind of loses interest kind of thing. Yeah. Right, right. So how did, did she like? She's fast. She, she had track record at K1 for the longest time until K1 brought um, 
the age mm-hmm. the age restriction in mm. this this little kid Zach he's probably like 90 pounds he he held the track record for the adult cart but since he's only 12 they put him back in the kid cart it's ridiculous <laughs> all because some age insurance all because yeah. of some guy I'm not going to mention their names <laughs> Got pissed off got that a pissed, twelve-year-old, no a twelve-year-old was beating him. Uh, seriously, what a loser! Yeah. Do they do a weight thing, or is it just no? But they should. Yeah, they should do a weight thing, especially for this new GP they're doing. Yeah, they should definitely have everyone like two hundred pound weight limit kind of thing. Something stand like that. on a scale. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, she had the track record. She's fast at K one. But then when Zach came back, now he's forced to race the kid carts. He. I think he turned over a thirty-one nine, and she was a thirty-two flat. Dude, that's good. So right there, yeah. Wow. Now in I the told big her she could get him because she's actually lighter than him. Right. I said, go follow him, learn his line, and you may she, learn something. She's like, he won't let me do that because I don't let other people do that. So. Oh, she already <laughs> yeah. knows the strategy. She already yeah. knows. Move over. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't follow me. So has she gone? Have you taken her to like now? Like I took her to Apex outdoor? one time to Apex. Uh, she wasn't even in the power band. <laughs> She's like, whoa, <laughs> this is a bit different. Track, yeah. She learned the track, and she was freaked out by the sound. Oh, because it's so much loud. Because she used to so electric, yeah. not even yeah, a gas yeah, indoor freak, cart. Interesting. That's the one thing that freaked her out. Hmm. So then on the way home, I pull up YouTube, and I hand her my phone, and I'm like, I'm playing it through my stereo in, yeah. my, in my truck, and I go, listen, this is a kid exits – pit in a in a comer and i'm like that's what you sounded like and then as he gets on the straightaway it just starts you know building up right. pin you know before you know it he's pinned and i'm like that's what you need it to sound like and she's like i'll do it next time that's so. awesome has she been out since no no <laughs> <laughs> so are you the dad that's like i i imagine it, you kind of come off this way that you're just like you have to ask me to go to the track. I'm not going to push you to go. If you want to go. I am kind of in between. Like I kind of know where I sit yeah. with it. I know what I can, how far I can go with it. And then I kind of use the reverse str- str- uh, strategy, yeah. psychology, psychology yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, on like, you know, just try to talk like you know other other kids don't get a chance to do this you know this is kind of special yeah you know a lot of people don't have this kind of opportunity where their dad's like willing to take them to the track and take them to k1 and she doesn't even like going to k1 really that much right now she's like all into like her little ipad i'm like get off that thing <laughs> oh dude. frisbee tell dude yeah it's like let's go i got her i got her a nice new collar because she she had a k1 yeah neck collar and it was just so thick and big, and she was like, "I can't." They she, are. She was like, <laughs> the K ones are it was ridiculous. And then I got her one of the new school like carbon fiber, nice. like thin ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she hasn't even used it yet. It's just sitting there. I'm like, "Look at your new collar." <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Sick. I'm like, see, it's carbon yeah. fiber. <laughs> cool, Dad. I'm gonna go back to my iPad. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I mainly coach kids from 12 to 16, mm-hmm. and man, it is amazing. In between sessions, just like you're done with them, and they're like, "Cool, back to their phone, iPad." I'm like, "You have friends in the tent? Like, why don't you guys just go hang out or like throw the? F- I used to throw the football around That's or something in the pits." Can Nothing. you pull up their uh, data and stuff? You, you do a lot. Do a I do lot everything? Of, like, laps and yep. overlay and everything. All that? Yeah. And they're not even into that. I have a few that are obsessive about it. They're like, I if I don't look at it with them, they're like. Chris, why am I not looking at the data with you this session? I'm like, because you don't really need to this session. You know what you need to work on. You're you look at breaks. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> and, nothing uh, happened. Then I have others that could care less. They're I'm telling them something. They're just staring off in what? the sunset. No way. Oh, 100 percent. What? And they're pretty fast, I'm sure. So. Oh yeah. But they could be better. It can always be better, yeah. right? But like you the one, the I, ones that are like off into space during data room, are they still very fast? Really? 100. percent Yeah. They just don't. I, I don't. I don't think there is a. If you're this way or this way, that makes you a faster driver or not. Right. You know. I don't look at. I. I mean. I know. I don't look at data much when I drive because I grew up without it. So I know how to use it. I know how to. But sometimes I think it psychs myself out. 
when yeah. I look at it, I over th- start to overthink things. And I think there's drivers that are more analytical and are more visual and need that, and it helps them a lot. Yeah. And I know drivers that when they look at it, it hurts them because they over- they start to overthink and they dissect it too much instead of having that feel. Where the drivers that have that innate <clears throat> feel already don't necessarily need to look at the data because they have that innate feel. What about like in cars? Like the, you know, because like in karting, I never looked at data. It yeah. wasn't even a thing. It's more important in cars for sure. Okay. Did it, Do you guys have much data in GRC? We tried. We did it here and there. Um, we did some video overlaying towards the end of when I was driving with them. But I stressed it more than anything. And it just never happened. Because we had a two-car team. Right. And you can benefit for... I mean, it, it only benefits everyone. And who was your teammate most of the time? Sver Isaacson. Yeah, okay. Um, who was really good under braking, where I'm more of a soft foot kind of roll. Of, roll roll yeah. ton of entry speed. So there's times when I was kind of suffering. And you're like, I would love to be able to see exactly, exactly. why that is, right? Yeah. Is he going deeper? Is holding pressure longer? Is yep. he off the brake quicker? Yeah. What's the technique that? Yep. Did the FS 2.0 help? What's that? Did the Formula Car thing, it did that did, help but at it's all? Still, I'm still, even to this day, I'm still like, you know, kind of like a momentum kind of. Yeah. Do those cars have ABS in GRC? Mm, no. No ABS. No. Ooh. And I never locked up brakes. Really. Never. Interesting. My team was oh. always like, Bucky, we need to bed your brakes. I'll, <laughs> I'll do it for you. Because I never got the heat in the brakes. <laughs> You're They're never like, going to bet them. They just came in and they don't even look like they've been used. Hey, there's benefits. I'm sure there's circuits that you went to that yeah, yeah. it was a huge yeah, benefit suited, to yeah. roll corners at yeah. not overslowing the car. Totally. And, yeah, there was definitely tracks where I was faster and there was tracks where I was like struggling. Yeah, I, I feel like it's weird too. Like if you don't have a permanent, like they're all temp, mm-hmm. temp circuits, right? Like there's no no place you go. Like I, let, let's say you go to Daytona. Well, like the one the in style. Barbados we was all, somewhat... We we only had a couple of it times where we were like having issues with brakes. Other than that, it's like you could freaking drive around the whole track with your foot on the left. Just really, yeah. Never never just really overheated brakes except for maybe Daytona and Barbados was probably the only time when we had brake issues. And those were two tracks <laughs> I think that you had more speed coming from a banking right yeah. on. Yeah. Breaking on asphalt into a dirt section. Well, Daytona right? was just plain hot. Yeah. Right. And so you, you go from like, let's say Daytona, the next year. Does the track look the same? Is it, it almost close the same? To the same. They changed it a little bit, but it was it was close to the same. Yeah. Because I feel like in that, like in GRC, you have to be so flexible with just always changing. One thing that I learned with GRC was how fast you have to adapt. If you well, miss one yeah. practice you're tense off of everyone else. I bet, for sure. And we were missing a lot of practice because we were going through some issues. Like, I'd go out and turbo's done. Miss that practice. Go out and, you know, boost hose comes off or something. Right. Just weird stuff always happening. Right. I would lose a lot of seat time. Mm -hmm. And then it was like qualifying. Like, oh, cool. (laughs) I've done like three laps. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah, and that's when data would come in good. Oh, you know? right, exactly. Because if your teammate was able to do more laps, yeah. you'd at least be able to go, okay, that's about where they're breaking. Yeah. Yeah. Man. One thing one thing I was thinking about is like, so, you know, you take your skating career and everything. You're, I would imagine you're able to, I was kind of asking about, about it earlier, but like, you know, you can, in skating, technically, if you wanted to, you could practice every day, mm-hmm. you know, if your body could do it. Right. But in racing, as you made that transition, it's it's kind of like you mentioned it earlier. It's it's kind of a little bit like down to your budget, down to scheduling. You can't practice like no. I don't care who you are. Nobody can practice every day. So how how did you manage that? Where you know you go from a skill where it's like repetition, doing it every day, just working at the you know refining the art, yeah. and then you get into racing where it's like you have these issues. There's different things that prevent you from like being able to practice, get better, et cetera. Sim. I have a sim at home that I raced a lot. Um, go-karting. Uh, I jumped in like random. I couldn't, I couldn't jump in any like 
different manufacturer right. cars, like no Fords or anything like that. Mm. But I could race like Razors and cross carts and stuff like that. Right. Anything that wasn't like a direct competitor to yeah. Subaru. Um, that's about it, though. Mostly karting. Back, I, I carted more when I drove for them. Uh, now I don't because I've, I've, I've done some like cross carting and stuff like that. Yeah, I saw it. Like, you had an Instagram video on yeah. I was looking at. How is that thing? It looks cool. Yeah, sequential. But there's only like four or five of us that do it. So, and it's not really competitive because some of the carts are definitely built and some right. aren't, you know? So it's like. Uh -oh. There's yeah, big yeah. differences in performance. Big difference yeah. in performance. Do you think uh, it'll catch on? It should. Is it fairly inexpensive? Relative? Uh, it's racing. I mean, it's yeah, always it's, expensive. I think, it, I think you can it's get expensive. one for like 15 grand, 15, 20 grand. It's not horrible. It's not bad. Tires probably last a pretty decent amount. Yeah, you can run the same tires for a while. It's dirt. That's good yeah. news. That's, That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even if it's wet or, you know, you, you don't really have to change tires. You don't really run a slick. They're all kind of kind of rain kind of looking dirt tires. Did I did I see this out at like Thunder Hill too? Were they doing they just something? built a track out there and that's where the guy is like, like on kinda, the yep. Oh okay. They so it's that that off road track there. Interesting. Yeah. So I want to check one out. Ready. I've seen they've been they've had them out in it's California for the last like year and a half, two years. So yeah. Just slowly trying to get get attention. I think that would get like a person like me, I'm I'm totally a grip guy. I have done nothing off road. But like seeing that, I saw like an onboard from I think it was Alex Keys or something, and it looked badass. That it's, looked super cool. It's the most fun that you can have, besides being in an actual race. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's sold. We're we're making this we're happen in. somehow. It we're is. We're making it happen. We got to drive these. I would say, I I think the razors are going to be close to what these do. Okay. Um. But. It's where it needs to go. Yeah. I mean, uh, the video that I saw of you, I mean, the thing was dancing around. I mean, Dude, your hands were straight and you were just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> trying to keep the thing all, going straight. It's all in, you're, you're steering with your left foot. That's cool. We're in. Wow. We're doing this. Is it all rear wheel drive? Yes. Even yeah. better. Even better. Even better. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. And it's relatively like cheap to run. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you buy the car. When we do the Formula X, which starts up, I think, in. A month you should come out to paris and jump in it you we'll do it definitely do some check laps. it out yeah. yeah that'd be that'd be cool and then are they trying to like go to different races like around california right now i think they're just trying to activate the awareness you know and i mean the the guy that i races the guy that i race with um igor he's a russian he builds his himself yeah the other guy tony he has uh two I think he's getting two more that he kind of bought, but kind of designs. Right. Um, as well, he does. He changes some stuff, but it's it's plug and play, man. That's it's, cool. Yeah, that is cool. And we'll I, go check it out. It's a good way to get people. I don't know into off road stuff, like at, at a lower entry point. Because I feel like everything else, it's like I don't know I, how I to no, get into it. Yeah, I know you racers. have the side by sides that now have like their own little series, and they do the off roads. They do like the mint four hundred. I've, I've raced. I've raced in the side by sides, and I've raced the cross carts. And it's cross carts are like the equivalent of like being in an open wheel car, but on the dirt. Dude. Oh, like yes, it's, you just go. like put the cell on. That was yeah. sold. Let's go. With, <laughs> sold put, me. Put a uh, put a suspension on a shifter cart. Let's go. And That's drive the, it on dirt. Wow. The side by sides. All, every time I've watched them, like that, just looks so boring and slow and they just are. like side by, what it was. Side by it's, side. The side by sides, like the the razors and the can ams and yeah. all that. Okay. They're, they're like yeah. It would be like racing, kind of like a Miata. Right. Yeah. Like I hate it's Miatas. Fun. It's fun. It, right. It's fun. Technique. Yeah. It's racing. Momentum. And it's it's budget. You know, yeah. you can do it. A small budget. But I just don't see how cross carts have not caught on more. Hmm. Maybe the right people aren't promoting it. They're they're designing it, which is great. They got the great they got the feel. Now they just need you know they need drivers cafe, in seats. They need Cafe Machina to do a podcast. To hype it up. A video. <laughs> hype to video. hype it up. <laughs> Drive some stuff. Have a little I races. just think they need to be more I think 
I, I think really the razors and stuff are stealing the thunder. Do you think it's because there's big manufacturers behind it, yeah. big money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. And, and why are the side by sides not, I guess, as cool? Is it just that they're bigger? They're okay. bigger, and they're they don't have the power. That Higher the center of gravity. Yeah, yeah, they sit up yeah. right. Yeah, they're okay. they're not racing vehicles, right? I mean, they make them, but they're they're, they're a leisure I vehicle think, that they're ra- turning yeah. into racing. Vehicles. I think right. what it, what what's happening is. I think they're going to become what a cross cart already is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. You can modify a razor. You right. can do all that to yeah. it, lower it, put the suspension, you know, control arms on it and widen it up and but you're just you're trying to kind of reinvent the wheel that's already Right. A cross there. cart you can buy like that or you don't have to Yeah. soup you don't have to buy all these other extra things. It's already that's what it is. Right. right. That's cool. I'm sold. We're doing it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And that, I guess it's a good move that they do have it on the side of like Thunder Hill, like as you enter, you yeah. can like see it. That's probably a good marketing. Yeah, they've, they've taken them out. Uh, in the beginning, they were going to Adams mm-hmm. a lot. I remember seeing the videos out at Adams. Well, that guy, Tony, with Crosscart USA. Yeah, Crosscart yeah, USA. Yeah, he, uh, Adams, Apex a lot. Okay. We're doing it. We're checking the first race out. And he's in, in Utah. Utah. He's in Utah now. I think he's doing some stuff with Hoonigan. And okay. Oh. Hmm. Wow. That would be big. If he can get Ken and Hoonigan involved, it should help a little bit. Yeah, but it's not going to get like the backing that it needs. I don't think. Still, I think you need you need manufacturer you need to money. Make, like twenty of those things. Yeah, you know, like right turnkey. That's Ready how the to go. Series gets yeah. going. that's true. I, that's what I think. That's what GRC needs. They need cross carts. Yeah, like cool. as the the US have two thousand equivalent of getting into supercar or or maybe even. So they have su- carts. They have lights, but it's just no, that's know, already so expensive, like yeah, you were saying. So no, that needs to be lower. That's not reasonable as an entry point and that's into where the racing. Razor, the razors are going to be cheap. Yeah. And it, it it will do, but it's not where it needs to be. Yeah. How much do these you- things are going to look so slow? Oh. You what, know, the even, razors? Yeah, yeah. Compared to the, Especially on oh, those tracks. Because the lights and stuff. Because the tracks are much bigger than what they race on now. Yeah. The stadium stuff they do, it's cool because they're jumping them more and everything. But on a big track, like you said, they're just going to look slow compared to and what gonna else look, is there. They're going to look like the super trucks look in turns. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those Doesn't are, ins- cool. those are yeah. nuts. That's cool. That racing's crazy. Well, Bucky, thanks for uh, coming out. We really appreciate yeah. it. We'll have to get you guys out there. We'll do yeah. it. We'll do a little little thing. A little yeah, no, but thanks for coming out. And, yeah. you know, thanks I think it was, me. it was cool learning about, you know, all the different, you know, your story and, um, you know, like the the racing behind it, because mm-hmm. you know I think uh, karting is definitely the grassroots of motorsports. And yeah. I wanted to, I mean the the K one speed thing. Yeah, I think that's that's cool. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I want to follow it's a good that stepping stone. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not being in karting for so long and being it really how I make my living. That is a area that I'm really surprised our industry doesn't. Yeah. Try to tap into more. It's yeah. crazy to me. Right. And and that's like those are the people that are clearly interested in racing. Right. You know, if they're going and doing but they it don't, regularly. They don't know how to go after indoor carts. And I know I really I coached at a karting school for a long time and oftentimes people will come in from like indoor karting K one experience and it's like a whole different world. It takes them almost relearning. So it's like it's cool that K one made like a gap to yeah. like teach them how to that kid Zach that I talk about he is so fast at K1 that it's it's ridiculous the amount of money that he spends every night at K1 when he could be out at like Apex or right I think he can't go to Cal Speed yet because of his age no he can go he can go huh yeah how old is he 12 12 yeah he can go definitely yeah 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 yeah. no but that's the thing like you're getting experience at K1 but you're gonna there's a different learning curve right when you get in the well, the, the guy who complained about Zach <laughs> is also really fast at K1, and I took him to Cal Speed, and mind blown. He was, <laughs> yeah, he was. It's the way it normally not is. Not really even close on pace. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Believe me, I know. I've well, it's good that I've done that with a few guys before. Yeah, come I've out. seen it. Come out, come check it. Check it out. No. Okay. No, you yeah. think you're a big dog at your indoor karting facility. Have fun with that. And he kept talking about like K1. I was like, dude, yeah. stop it. <laughs> yeah. 
exactly. Yeah. No, and if they have that outdoor place and those people that are now doing the K1, whatever carts they are, mm-hmm. they'll also see like technically pro guys or at least just yeah. the they'll real see outdoor. the shifter carts. They'll be around it more. Yeah, I think it will help the sport. Yeah. Big time. Oh, big time. Big That's going to be cool. That's yeah. needed. For They're sure. doing it right. They are. Even, even uh, K1, they have that K1 gear shop and mm-hmm. stuff and everything. Yeah. And, they sell carts and stuff yeah. through there. So no, they do. Definitely. They're doing it right. Well, awesome, guys. Thanks cool. again for uh, checking in episode 10. We'll see you next week, episode 11. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you.